Welcome everyone. Um, hopefully you're joining us for a chess lesson. Hold on one second. Right back. So we're going to be covering beginners lessons. This is our fourth lesson. Ah, thank you. Sorry about that. All right, sorry about that. So we have already covered some basic stuff. We did free candy. Thing that people, beginners, miss the most is free candy. And my students, even when they get to be 1,500, 1,600, they could be playing correspondence games and be 17 and 1,800, they still all miss free candy. Even in a correspondence game, they're still missing free candy. So free candy is something that we try to limit get to the point where we're giving away no free candy, but it's really hard, right? You're going to give away some free candy at some point. Free candy is basically when you leave something under attack or someone attacks you and it's not defended enough so that you're going to lose material. And this happens all the time for beginners, and it happens more. The more of a beginner you are, the more likely you are to give away free candy. A stronger player could just play solid, and wait and wait and wait and at some point in the game you're likely to give away free candy and at that point if you're giving away a pawn it might not matter as much but chances are you're giving away a minor piece and if you play with your queen too much if you go out and attack all the time and play with i have beginners that just play with one piece the queen they just chase everything around and take whatever they can and threaten things and eventually that queen gets lost so you can lose everything from your queen the rooks the knights or just some pawns but it happens all the time. Free candy. It's going to be a recurring theme until you get from being a beginner where you almost give away no free candy. Now, we're talking about just free gifts. I mean, free candy, giving it away. And we're not talking about because you're doing a gambit. We're talking about beginners that shouldn't be playing gambits yet. You should play solid and safe and don't give away any free candy because gambit is nice if you know what you're doing. I like to say you have to be good enough to play bad openings. So free candy is our first lesson that we did. Our next lesson, we talked about the opening. There's three phases to the game, opening, middle game, and end game. In the opening, the first 10 to 12 moves we talked about, we have to be careful about how we get our pieces out into the board. We have to have goals. And we do. We have five solid goals for the opening. I should start saying we have four solid goals for the opening, but we have five. Develop your pieces, develop your pieces, and develop your pieces. Those are the three most important, the three first goals, the opening. Then I like to say next is king safety. Got to get your king to safety. And the last one is control the center. The center being the four center squares. I'm talking about these boys right here, just these center squares. Can you control those squares? Can you control the traffic? Can you own the center? All right, so we've already had three lessons, and the first one was all about free candy, and we do them in three days. Mondays, we present a concept, so today we're going to present our new concept theme topic for this week. Wednesdays, we go over a, a few more games that we see out there of people either using these concepts or failing and, and failing because of these concepts. And then Fridays, we play games against students and hopefully also show when they are following the concepts and when they're not. So that's the way we try to break out the class. So today we've already covered free candy, development, and king safety. So I thought, you know, today might be good to lead us into the middle game. We've talked about the opening. Reminder about the opening. We only want you to move your two center pawns unless you're provoked into moving a different pawn. Now, you can fianchetto a bishop. You're allowed. But again, you don't have to because you could just focus on your center pawns and your bishops will get out onto the board. We want a castle, kingside or queenside. We want a castle behind three unmoved pawns. This is all goals of the opening and part of development. And then we want to get our queen off the back rank so the rooks are actually in line talking to each other. And that's just, a, that's all we worried about. Don't give away any free candy. 
develop our pieces, put our king behind three unmoved pawns, and I forgot to mention, have a minor piece hanging around. Have some kind of minor piece hanging around to help protect that king. And then you move those pawns only when you have to for either an attack or to stop an attack of your opponent. Otherwise, we want to keep our king safe. And when you get to the near the end of the middle game, you have to beware that if that king is behind those three unmoved pawns still, a rook could come down here and mate you on the back rank. So as we transition to the end game, we want our king to become active, be well employed into the game. It's a good attacking piece in the end game. And we want to make sure that we make loft, make space for that king so he won't get trapped on the back rank. Now, we haven't talked about a lot of that yet because we haven't even gotten to end games. We're just, just helping you get from being a beginner, a novice. You know all the rules. That's our only prerequisites that you know the rules, but you don't really play. And so we're helping you become a player. And we want you to learn how to play the best way. So I'm not going to ask you to study openings. I've already given, and, and you can look on my stream documentation, I have the IMs, mostly IMs, that I like to watch. And you can watch them. I'm not telling you not to. But we want to get you started with beginner's fare. So if you're already an 18, 19, 2000 rated player, you might be like, ah, this is all easy stuff. I don't need this. Check your games. Even if you're... Below to even if you're 2000 and below, 2000 around that area, I, I just watched an 1800 play and they were leaving free candy on the board. So, all of us do. You need to think about it and go through it. So, how do you play the, the middle game? The middle game is extremely complicated. There are millions and billions of, of different lines that could happen. Uh, the game is so full of, of rich choices that. It's that's why we love the game because it's just you can play for the for your whole life and not repeat a, an exact game you've ever played, and you can play some beautiful chess. You make art. Chess can be just a beautiful thing. But so how do you go about playing the middle game? And, and so there are many 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 things for us to cover. So I like to keep these as simple as possible. Come cover only one basic concept and build on that. So it'll take a long time, but I think that way you're getting a better understanding of each concept. So to that end, today I'm going to introduce to you a way to think. When you move and when you think about every move you make, these are things that should go through your mind. They become second nature. They become just uh, subconscious sometimes when you get there, like worrying about free candy, number four. You're not going to worry about free candy when you get stronger. You're going to notice when things are under attack. You're going to notice when they're being attacked more than they're defended. You're not going to give pieces away. You're not going to put pieces into places where they are under protected and over attacked. So free candy will become this, this subconscious thought. Uh, finding targets and tactics later in your career on um, 6A and B, those will become second nature. They will become subconscious that you're just like, oh, that looks good. Oh, that's a weakness. Oh, you know, I'm going to go for that. Oh, look, I can pin. I have a discovered attack. You'll, you'll think about all these tactics and they'll come to you really quickly and easily and life will be good. Are you developed? Is your opponent developed? Now, we spent a whole week on development. So that should become second nature. You should remember when you're a lot of times we're in the middle of a game and we're like, oh, our opponent's doing this or that. What do I do? Wait, I haven't even finished developing. If I don't have any obvious attacks, I'm going to develop. And those things that maybe a 21, 22, 23, or the IMs that we watch, that we like to watch, the international masters and grandmasters, for them, second nature might be the attacks that we would take like 20 minutes to find, right? So those will come too in time. But we have to get the basics. So some other things you could do is can we play chase? And we could play, it's like chasing the monarchy, right? We're going to chase them around. So the best thing to chase is the king. And that means then check. And a lot of times we tell beginners, don't just say check for the sake of saying check. And that is absolutely correct. Don't just say check for the sake of saying check. 
but you should identify all possible checks. Because as you know, if you say check and they can't get away, it's checkmate. And it would be so sad to miss a checkmate, even a one move checkmate, because you're not looking for checks. So look for opportunities to chase the king. If you chase the king early enough, you might keep the king from being able to castle. If they can't put something in between, trade your piece, they're going to have to run away. And if they run away, they can't castle. Cannot castle out of check. I know you know that because you know the rules. So we're going to play chase the king, but we also will play chase the queen. And that happens usually easier than chase the king. And when we play chase the queen or king, we want to do so to gain tempo, to gain time. We've talked about this a little bit. Time is a major factor. And I'm not just talking about the clock running down. We're talking about tempo, rhythm, and how fast are my pieces getting out into the board? And do I have pressure that I'm putting on my opponent? Is my opponent having to react and react and react? Well, then we have the momentum, we have the tempo on our side, we have time on our side, and it, it's a definite factor that we want to take advantage of. And I've seen too many people that develop ahead of their opponent, the opponent moves too many pawns, but then they don't attack. They just sit back and watch, and their opponent catches up in development or trades off all the pieces, and they get to a very stale, boring endgame, and they've lost the advantage of time. So we're going to try to keep uh, an eye on that. But then the number one thing that you do, and by the way, these are in order. So I actually suggest you try to do these in order. That the first thing you do every time your opponent moves is think why they do that. What did it benefit them? What are they trying to do to me? Is there a threat? See, this way you don't miss free candy. Because if they moved and attacked you, you'd go, oh, they're attacking my piece. No free candy here. Discovered attacks. Beginners miss them all the time. Why? Because you move a piece, but it's not the piece that you're moving that's doing the attacking. It's the piece that you've uncovered. So when we develop our pawns forward two squares, we are uncovering this bishop. We're uncovering this queen. But all we think about as beginners is, oh, there's a pawn here, and it's attacking these two squares. We'll see that. See this little. Mickey Mouse head. So we'll see that this pawn is attacking two squares, but we forget the fact that this queen and this bishop have been released. And so many times pieces are sitting out here and they are coming under attack when this pawn moves and we don't realize it. That's a discovered attack. I believe the strongest tactic in chess can be a discovered attack, especially a discovered check. And then combine that with maybe a double check or a fork or a double attack being part of a discovered attack. Oh, it's just, oh, like I said, chess can be an art and that's just a beautiful thing, beautiful thing. All right, so every time we move, we want to go through these six, and actually eight things here, seven things, sorry. We wanna go through these six things and say, what's going on? Now, in a five minute game, you're not gonna have time. That's why we tell you not to play five minute games for serious improvement not 10 minute games. 15 minute games are good. 15 minute games plus an increment, five, 10 seconds, 15 seconds is outstanding. And then correspondence is great. Even if you just say, we're gonna do you know a day per move. Now, there's negatives to correspondence that I wanna get into. They're not really negatives, but you're allowed to look at books and you're, you're supposed to be able to look up lines and which won't help you. Because then you get, again, the crutch of thinking you want to learn an opening. You want to know that. You want to memorize that opening. And I don't want you doing that. So I prefer you not play correspondence because of that. Play it. But don't use it that way. If you're going to do correspondence, just be thankful for all that extra time you have to think. And think thoroughly through your moves. Uh, but don't use the opening. Try to play it on your own. Yes, that'll put you at a disadvantage against the people that are using opening books, but we're trying to learn. We're not just trying to win games. We're not just trying to improve our rating. We're actually trying to learn and become as good a chess player as we can. So each move, we want to think through these things, and some of them will become fast and automatic, and some will take up a lot of time, so you might not be able to do all of these as well as you want. 
Now, some of them you could stop doing, right? So number three, am I developed? Well, once you are fully developed and your opponent is fully developed, there's no more questions to ask about development. Same thing about, remember, part of development is king safety, or part of the opening is king safety. So as long as I have both of those covered, uh, I, I don't need to ask that every time. So some of these are going to become a little easier, free candy. That will become really quick and easy, so hopefully we won't have to do it. So let's look at a game. This is between a student, and uh, they, they're both 1500s. One is nearly 1600, 1580s, and the other one is low 1500s. And we'll see how the game goes. All right? Just let's just take a look. So white moves, and let's we'll do this one from white's perspective. You could do it from both perspectives or from blacks, but we'll just use white for this argument's sake. So black could ask the question. Well, if all I'm going to do whites, then I won't have to tell you what black would think, right? So let's just press on. So white should say, why did black do that? All right. So black freed a bishop, freed the queen. And it's pretty early to bring out the queen, so hopefully that's not the reason, but it does free the bishop. And it also supports either a pawn push here or a pawn push here. Now, knowing that we think we should only be moving center pawns, then we're going to assume this is the right choice for black, that that's probably what's going to come. So white has to decide, do I care about that? Really, you have to think about it. What am I going to do if black pushes? Am I going to take? and then allow it to take back with the queen or the pawn? Am I going to push and put my pawn here and keep the knight out of the best square? Am I going to leave it there and say protect it, or protect it, or eh, do the Murphy, don't want to do that to protect it, don't want to do that to protect it, it's, not, it's a non-center pawn. Don't really want to do this to protect it either because one, it blocks my bishop, and I want to develop my bishop first. Right now, if this is where he's going, then it wouldn't matter, but I should know where I want to put the bishop. But also, if I put him here and he puts him here, I got to worry about the fact if he takes, I take back, my queen is open. So, there's, you know, you start thinking of all these complications. Again, you won't have that much time. But in general, you should just say to yourself, this attacks nothing directly, no pieces, so there's no free candy. He might push this pawn. I'm okay. I can just push here if I want and take over the center and have both pawns up here hitting all of these squares and just do that. And that would actually be the most common response to e6 would be just taking over the center. This would be the most common response and you don't have to know the opening you're playing. You could just be playing by the general principles. So white says, nope, I'm gonna develop a piece. It's these squares and he says, Black did what we thought, right? Black um, pushed towards the center. So now what? Because we didn't take over the center, um, I got to worry about this pawn is under attack. So I know this is free candy. So why did Black do it? He's attacking free candy, first of all. If I take, he could take back with the queen, we said, or with the pawn. So I can either take or I got to now deal with this. I can push. My knight's protecting it, so it's even... It's not even under attack, but it'll be protected. It'll keep the knight out of its best square. Maybe I want to push. I don't know. White has to decide. White decides to protect the pawn. What's wrong with this move? First of all, we block our bishop, so our bishop only has one square to go to. Or we're going to have to fanchetto it. Two, if black takes right now, if black were to say, I'm just going to take your pawn, white pretty much has to take, and we can lose our right to castle. Is that the end of the world? No, no. Uh, white's still doing fine. White has one piece developed, black has none. But white's gonna have a harder time of getting his king to safety. Now, that said, the queens are off the board, the most powerful piece. So normally the kings are okay not to do normal castling, but this is something that white should decide that he actually wants to deal with. Right? You just have to think about those complications, that if I do this, and black takes, and I take back, I might, we might trade queens. So white can say, well, instead I'll go here and protect the pawn. And white could have pushed the pawn, as we said. But white did protect the pawn. So we'll see. Black did not take the pawn and, ru and take the queen and ruin black's, white's chance to castle. So black, white has to again say, why did black do this? He attacks this square, attacks this square. 
is a nice place for a knight afterwards. And in general, when you play uh, the d4, d5 pawn up two, it's nice to have the c pawn next to it. But, but there are negatives. And the negatives, right? Remember, we go through this list. So why did he do that? No, he taxed the center. Okay. Doesn't free any pieces, but he does allow the knight to be behind this pawn instead of blocking the pawn. Okay. That's why. Uh, can we play chase the king? Well, we can't. We blocked our bishop, so we can't say check. Okay. And the queen, we could come over here and chase. But this is one of those when, why am I going to chase when he can either block with the bishop or he can push the pawn? This is my good bishop. We haven't even talked about good and bad bishops. But these pawns are on white. So this bishop is my bad bishop because he has very little scope. These pawns are in its way. And this is my good bishop because there's nothing blocking this bishop. All the lines that my pawns are on are not black. So that's my good bishop. So I don't want to put my good bishop here and then trade off my good bishop. That'd be a bad thing, even though this is his good bishop also. And then we just, you know, so I could play chase the queen. Probably not a good move. In fact, we could chase the queen out here to hit this pawn that won't be protected because our bishop will have left. And then the queen has a nice diagonal. And the queen is out too early. Ah, but we're giving him tempo to attack our pawn, and we're going to have to deal with this pawn. We don't want to lose a free pawn. It's just, right, not a good idea to play chase the queen. All right, so we're not going to play chase the king. We're not going to play chase the queen. Am I fully developed? No, I need to keep developing. Are my pieces sad? No, my bishop's a little sad because he can't get out. But not just a little. And uh, do I have any weaknesses? And again, we're pretty early to worry about weaknesses. Uh, but I don't, maybe I don't want to trade queens. So I could play the knight here, protecting the pawn, and that way if he takes, I can either take back with the pawn and the queen can't hit my queen, the knight's in the way, or I could just take with the knight and the queen still doesn't hit my queen. So that might be a good piece to develop now, even though it's not in the best square, even though it blocks in the bishop. Ugh, don't like all of that. We could put the knight here, and then if he takes... We could take either with the pawn, because if he trades queens, the knight could take. Or we could take back with the knight. But if we go here, ah, look. Bishop's blocked by his own pawn. So no pinning action there. So let's see what white chooses to do. So what we're going to concentrate on the rest of this lesson, rather than go through all six of these items, we're going to only focus on one thing. Why did he do that? Because that's enough. If, if you can get good at avoiding free candy, developing your pieces, king safety, and identifying every move. By the way, this you should do no matter how fast a game you're playing. You should know why your opponent did what they did. Okay? That, that, so let's, let's focus only on number one, why did he do that? And next week, we'll talk about playing chase the king and queen. Right? So for this week, why did he do that? The black moves here. Why did he do that? This was the square he opened up for the knight. Good square for the knight. This blocks in his bishop. It takes a little bit of square away from the queen. So why did he do this? Hmm. It's this square. But he would have hit that square from there. It's this square, but I already have the knight, the pawn, and the queen on that square. So why did he go here? This is critical. When you look at your opponent's moves, and you cannot figure out a good reason for why they move there. They might be looking at phantoms. They might just be playing poor moves. You don't know. You don't care. You get to the point where you decide, I don't see a good reason for that move. Then I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And in fact, if I could find ways to punish that move, to make that move even look worse that they did that move, I'll do that. But for now... I don't see any reason. It blocks in the bishop. Uh, it's just, I don't like it there. All right. So should we have taken, right? So should we take? Why? I have no clue why we're taking. So if you think about the situation on the board right now, what are you supposed to be doing? Because we gave up on the other six. All we're looking for is why they do that. And then we know our goals in the opening. Develop, develop, develop king safety. Does this help with our development? No. Does it stop him from developing? Well, he takes back, so he doesn't get to develop. But we also call this relieving tension. 
by taking here, we just relieve tension in the middle. There were, there was a pawn. Look at all these pawns that are gone. So all that tension, all that tension is gone. Now this pawn has nothing threatening it. There's no threats against this pawn. And what did we gain for that? Nothing really. White should have continued with development, deciding where he's going to put this bishop. Where is he going to put this bishop? Over here or over here? And he should have pressed on with development. Or he could have put different type of pressure by pushing this pawn. Now, pushing this pawn means this knight stays there longer because it can't go, can't go here. This knight can't go here. And which means if this knight doesn't have any good squares to go to, and even if it does, this bishop is stuck behind this pawn for a long time. So a much better move would be to lock in this knight and therefore lock in this bishop for the long haul. This could be there for a longer time. You might say, oh, but, you know, he's going to do things like double attack. And you're right. He might very well attack this pawn again, and you're going to have to deal with that. So the only good way to protect that pawn again might be to do this. And then he has a little bit of trouble getting another attacker, and you're going to have to get another defender. Now, with that all said, I said I like that better, but really, that's not a development move either. So we shouldn't be doing that move yet either. It's really not called for. All we should be doing is developing. So I would have rather seen this or the more advanced fee and shadow that we're not supposed to be doing, but you don't really have many, many good squares for your bishop right now. Uh, and or fee and shadow this one and put this bishop on that nice long diagonal. That would be good also. So we should have developed, but instead we traded pawns. Why did, why did Black do that? Because he didn't want to leave free candy on the board. So why we know why we're doing this. We need to develop the bishop. All right. Black pushes the pawn. Why? All right. You got to ask yourself, why do you do that? How did the game change? That pawn was attacking center square. Look at that. Was attacking a center square. Now it doesn't attack the center square anymore. And it attacks these two squares. These two squares are really deep in white's territory. So they're not really doing too well. And these two squares that that pawn was attacking was a nice job because it kept the knight out of here and out of here. Now there's nothing to keep the knight out of there at the moment. You'd have to use another pawn or a piece. So this is actually a bad move. So again, you have to figure out why. What are they trying to do? It doesn't free any pieces. It doesn't help with development. It doesn't develop, right? So we're about to be... Hopefully, three pieces will be developed versus one. So we're ahead in development. It's a little cramping. It's a little cramping. But more importantly, it gave up the center control. We haven't taught yet, but you could see it. That pawn was occupying and attacking a center square. Now all it's doing is occupying. This square is no longer under contention. Neither is that square. They're both wide open for white's piece. All right. The white continues development. That's good. Nice long diagonal. If that knight moves, that pawn is going to be fied by that bishop. And we're ready to castle. So here comes the knight. Finally gets a second piece developed. Can't come here. Our pawn is doing good work. Could come here, but so what? Come here, yeah, but can't jump into here because, again, we have pawns attacking. So do we worry? No. It's a developing move. Logical, but all it is is a developing move. So white continues with development. So now white's finally getting back on the program. Instead of trading in the pawns, we're developing our pieces, and we have four pieces developed now versus two. So it's a race. Black is fighting for the race. Black has figured it out. I got to develop. I got to get my pieces out on the board. So now white needs to develop the queen and the bishop. Does not have to put the rook on the open file yet. Because that's not really considered development. But it's not a bad idea. Because how does black stop the attack? If we say check here, he either has to drop the bishop back here. Can't put it here because that would be one. And the rook would be two pieces versus only one protecting. That bishop would be lost here. The knight can't go here. It would just be free candy. The knight can't go here for the same reason, two pieces, free candy. 
So the and the queen, of course, won't go in front because you take the queen for a rook. An exchange rate problem. So we're down to with this move, black has to move the bishop back. Not very attractive. It should not be attractive anyway, right? That's not attractive. Then we could develop the queen to here and have two pieces attacking the bishop and only two pieces protecting it. So you still can't castle because one of the protectors would go away. So white does that. So white did not continue with development, even though he's only one piece ahead in development because of tactics. Remember, that was one of those things we said you could do, find tactics. We're not focusing on this week, but this is a tactic where we're going to force Black to put the bishop back. And look at that. It's almost like we could read Black's mind. We forced him to put that bishop back or lose material. So while we are deciding if we want to do this move, we decide it's a good move, we make the move, we should anticipate this move and be planning our next move. That's what we do during our time. Plan our next move. While, it's, so while he was thinking about how to get out of this problem, and let's see, I'm just curious. It took him only seven seconds to find that move. The chances are he realized it before White ever moved. He probably realized, oops, I'm going to get chased. And so guess what we're playing here, folks? We're playing chase the king. So we get to gain a tempo. Think about it. Bishop moved. Bishop moves back. So that bishop moved two times in the opening because we played chase the king. Woohoo! We got to see chase the king already. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right, so play chase the bishop. I mean, play chase the king. The bishop has to go on block. So now what? We said we could come here and have two pieces attacking the bishop. That might be a nice move, right? Gain tempo. Can't just castle because if you castle, you lose material. So that looks like it's a possible choice. Don't know if we're going to do that. I don't know what white does. Let's see what white does. The other thing is this bishop needs to get in the game. So this knight can move out here, or the knight can move here, or the knight can even drop here undeveloped to free the bishop. No, not I mean, this is this is a lot of times normal, so it could come here and hop here. Unfortunately, it can't come here and hop here because of the pawn. That pawn is doing something. We could also come here, but all we'd be doing is trading off our developed piece for his developed piece and having to take back with the pawn of the rook doesn't really gain us anything. We don't want to just trade off pieces when we have the pressure. So what does white do? I don't know. I'm not sure what this is. I, 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 I'm being honest. I don't know where white's thinking. So it does free the bishop, but there's nothing really to be hitting here. So better would have been to develop the queen. Now, black could do things like this to say, ha ha, now I'm going to come back and protect. And then, and then maybe white can say, I'm going to try fun stuff like this because they'll attack twice and I'm threatening to take off the knight. So if you castle, I can take the knight. I'll be threatening the pawn. Now, of course, black could take yours. So you, you know, right? You got to figure it all out. You got to see if it's worthwhile. You got to decide. Uh, you have some, you have to move this knight maybe. Uh, there's going to be things to do, but I don't understand. I, I truly don't understand how the knight works. I don't understand what we're doing. You know, pawn is protected. Pawn is protected. We have two pieces that need to develop, dying to develop. So maybe we're thinking the queen goes here. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe the knight's going to come back here later. Mm -hmm. I don't know. After castle, maybe the knight comes here and trade off things again. But I'm not eager to trade off. I don't know why we're trading off. But okay. So I would have rather seen develop. Develop, 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 right? All right, so black is, whew, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to castle because I, I have time. I have time to castle. I'm going to get my castle in. All right, so white takes his developed bishop and puts it out here where it could be taken. So do I like this move? No, I don't like this move at all. It weakens my king because now my three pawns are not unmoved. And it was okay when I had this tall bishop sitting here, this tall pawn sitting here, but now I've moved that tall pawn away. So no, I don't like this at all. Um, I'm not sure what happens here. I mean, we 
could try sacrifices. I don't think it works. And we're done. Let's see what else can happen. Uh, because now, you know, we're getting hit. So we could take this way, and that way we have this one attacking and this one att uh, protecting. So that's looking good, right? We might be able to bring our queen in next and threaten mate. But just chase the knight away. Don't see anything extravagant. Knight goes away, and black is fine. Um, white lost his main protector here, bishop. For what end? We traded it for a knight that wasn't doing anything. And he could put the knight here next. So uh, don't like this. Don't know what uh, white was thinking, but we moved our bishop twice. So we moved our bishop twice. We moved our knight twice. Remember what I talked about tempo and time and development. See, while we're trying to get on to the next lesson for this week, which is why did he do that? Uh, we're seeing that we still have problems with development. And this is the stronger of the two players. Instead of focusing on development, we are launching a pseudo attack. It's protected. So it's not really an attack. It's two pieces attacking, two pieces defending, and maybe, maybe if we can get the queen in, also maybe we can start some real shenanigans, but it's not so clear, right? It's not even clear if, if, if well, we're not going to do something silly. Let's say we did this and we allowed um, white to take. And let's say white would have take with the bishop. We take back, and the queen comes over and says, Ha! Now I'm threatening massive damage. No, you're not. That's a free piece. Free piece that way. And even if it wasn't a free piece, protect it. So really, and attack the queen. So I don't see the threat. I don't see the threat. Black could basically ignore this, or black could just say, Thank you for getting rid of your queen and, I mean, your bishop and weakening your position. But black, because black is a beginner also, does neither, does not take, does not ignore it, but black weakens his king's position for no reason that I can see, no good reason that I can see. Black weakens his king's side and doesn't take away the one developed, that good developed piece. So white says, I'm going to block this bishop so he can't even come back now. Now it's really, oh man, now you really should take this piece. Yeah, you should. He really should take that piece. And he should have taken it before, well, moved before. But black, again, not playing well. This bishop is not developed. This queen is not developed. We're not developing our pieces. We're weakening our king sides. And now we're moving our knight twice. So now we've moved our knight twice. We moved our bishop twice. So where are we at on tempos? Pretty much the same, folks. We move this knight twice. We move this knight twice. And we move the bishop twice. So we seem to be moving only a few pieces and not using all of our pieces. Uh, we have a bishop that wants to play. It's not playing because we're moving all our other pieces. And uh, this knight, taking that one off and got rid of it, rid of it and been in a nice, healthy position. Nice, healthy position. Uh, but we're we're out here, and I'm not sure what it's doing. There's nothing here that's under attack. Same way there's nothing here for this knight to attack. So, not sure what we're doing, folks. White could have said, go away, knight. White could have ignored the knight because it's not, Remember, we said, what do you, why did the opponent move here? Here, that's, that's a decent square. Okay. So it moves here, so it can move there. That's a decent square. Um, but right now, there's nothing protecting it. It's unprotected. So if I move this knight, even if I were to just take off this pawn, let's say I just take off this pawn. Um, can't really do that, can we? Because we lose this. Okay. And that would not be that would not be good overall. Okay. So yeah, granted, this this one is only defended once. And this is the second defender. So I can't just move the knight and uncover an attack on, the, on that knight. Too bad. Uh, I still don't like the bet, fact that my bishop is trapped. Uh, no place to go. Yeah, you got a place to run to eventually. 
<sighs> just an ugly game, guys. Uh, this knight is not well placed here. Don't know what I want to do to uh, punish him. I might just push my king up. Uh, but again, why not develop? Let's see. Maybe put the bishop here and develop the bishop. Just like to see the pieces get developed. But yeah, this this is a, I don't get that move at all. I'm not sure I get this move. So it protects the knight because it was two attacking and two protecting. And that allows this knight to now throw itself away and win a pawn because the knight's under attack. So maybe that's the thought. And then we have the counter thrust here by black. So king sides, we don't care about king safety. We have not finished developing. This should have been a really good one for the king safety lesson last week because neither side seems to care about king safety. You should, they're both just opening up their kings as much as they can. And, it's, and it should be scary for both of them because everything is pointing over at this king side. Everything is pointing at this king side. Um, and that one is blocking the bishop. But otherwise, he's got a lot of material trying to point at this king side too. And this one's sitting over here. It's just, it's interesting. But I wanted to look for why did he do that? So why did he do that? Attack the knight, which wasn't under attack. But now if that knight moves, the queen tries to take, it will be under. So that knight might be saying, I'm going to sit here for a long time. Again, we could have pushed on the knight and said, go away, knight, because this is like the only square the knight had, right? So if we look at that, we could have said, go away, knight, and the knight would have had to go here. And then this, you know, would be a great place to have a pawn later. Hmm, something to think about. Uh, we, could, we could then back this up with this knight, because guess what? That pawn can't chase my knight away like my pawn chased his knight away. So there may be a nice follow-up move. It's just right here, attacking the bishop again. Uh, this is looking good. Queen doesn't really have any scope. Bishop, ooh, doesn't have a pawn. It's not even a free pawn. Look at that knight. Knights do go backwards. So, interesting. Okay. But instead, we go two squares. So why do you do that? Only reason I can think of is to protect the knight. Okay. White changes again. Moves the bishop a third time. One, two, three times. And now we're attacking a pawn twice, but it's protected twice. So not really hitting anything, but um, not really being under attack yet either. Not sure. Not sure what's going on. So the knight moves and attacks the bishop, and now the knight protects the knight again. And so we're getting a nice solid fortress around our king. Um, this pawn would be hanging because of the pin tactic. But we'll, we might never see it. We don't know. Uh, but we do see that the knight and now the queen are attacking the bishop. Remember we said discovered attacks. So the knight, that's obvious that it's attacking the bishop. But also the queen is attacking the bishop. So we just got two pieces attacking the bishop out of the blue. Hello. Got to be aware of that stuff. Bishop backs up. Nope, nope, I don't want to trade. So the bishop went from here where it was hanging out with the king here, here, here. Four moves already with one piece. Our knight went from here to here, stayed. Our other knight went from here to here and stayed so far. And the poor bishop and the queen and the bishop and the queen don't get to play. Lack of development, lack of king's safety. Seeing it on both of them. So we push a pawn. Wow, we should be developing pieces. We're pushing pawns. It would have been great to see this bishop come somewhere out into the field of play. It would have been nice to see the queen get out into the field of play and make some threats. Uh, but we don't. We push a pawn. Right? And why? If you were to look at it and say, why did my opponent do that? Oh, so he could do this. That's really the only logical reason. Right? Might be to keep the bishop from coming here, but there's nothing there. Okay. So... It's to keep the bishop, probably from not from coming there, but to attack. So if that happens, so I have to think ahead. If that happens, what can I do? I can't go here, knight. can't go here, bishop. I can't go here, rug. Okay, so I'm going to go back. And if I go back, is that pawn here? Can he push another pawn? No, because I get to take, he takes, I take back. All right, so 
I'm okay. If he pushes, I can drop back. And if he tries to do anything to win my bishop, I have another move. So I can ignore that and maybe finally develop my bishop. Now, we don't develop our bishop. We get worried about this pawn push. So we counter it to say, if he pushes, I'm going to take first. He can't take back because he loses rook. So now this pawn push can't happen. We're very happy with ourselves because we stopped that, but we did not do what we're supposed to do in the opening, which is develop. So black moves the bishop a third time. Uh, do you remember? Moved here first, here second, here third. So now that bishop has moved three times. And why? You got to ask yourself again, why would he move it three times? Well, one might be to attack this pawn. Well, it is protected, but only once. But it is protected. Might be because he wants to move his queen. Because if you remember, the queen was the only thing protecting that bishop. So now that allows him to move his queen. And he could have moved his queen here first because it would have still protected the bishop. But in either case, the queen might want to move here, here, or here. Right? So he might want to move, or he might want to move here. So that's another reason. One could be that the queen wanted to be free to move, but he could have in a lot of squares anyway. Or it could be because he wants to attack this pawn, or it could be because he wants to attack this square. So now he has two attacking it, and now maybe he can move the rook over and attack another square. I don't know. Can't do it right away because there's still two pieces here. He needs the rook. So are we totally sure why he moved there? No. Do we care? It's hitting a protected pawn, so I'm not overly concerned. Right? And I can always move my king up when necessary. Okay, we'll see. So we developed the bishop. Finally, we developed the bishop only in response to the attack on our pawn, as if that was pawn was in risk. So now the bishop can just take. We would double our pawns, and that is what happens. We end up with double pawns and a really wide open king side. So I only have one of my original three pawns still protecting my king. Same thing for black. So this is just ugly game as far as king safety goes. Very, very ugly as far as king safety. So we did not develop the bishop still, but we did attack an undefended pawn. Right? That's always good. Right? The pawn is not defended. It's free candy if white doesn't do something about it. And we developed with tempo. Black developed while attacking, so white should do something about it. Can't chest, right? So white finishes development, believe it or not. White finishes development finally, and we're only on move 19. Remember I said it's 10 to 12 moves. We want to finish development. It took 19 moves because of all these pawn moves and multiple moves with single pieces. So, yes, I'm still harping on development because... We're supposed to be thinking about why do you do that? Well, we know tax the undefended piece. Uh, but development and free candy have to always play in our minds. So we developed the bishop, but again, you know, maybe more dynamic. Develop to a stronger square, like here, uh, where it protects this pawn. There's no pawns. There's never going to be a pawn that could push that bishop off of that square. Now, granted, it's hitting on a pawn that's protected. But, you know, good things might happen a little bit later when we push things around. So I would have preferred the bishop to go here. The other thing it does is it blocks the queen from hitting that square. So why do you do that? Well, one, to develop. Yay, we always like him when we develop. Two, hits this square, so maybe we could push that pawn. But we already know that's trade city. And we could just back up. We could back up to here. Um, we're safe, per se. Uh, the rook is protecting the rook. So what else changed? Well, I think it's a bad move because I thought he should have went here. Obviously not here. Okay, let's look at that. Here would be just bad, right? We just take quickly because now we get a fork. Just bad, right? That would just be bad. So it can't go there. Um, so... The only other square to develop the bishop to, and we, I totally believe we need to develop this bishop, would be here. Although it's not getting a lot of scope, I like it. I mean, he's hard to attack. There's nothing that can attack him anytime soon. No bishop, no knight. This is, this is a nice square. This is a nice square. We fully developed. 
Rooks can come over and, and fight for the open file now. And black is looking good in this position. So what's wrong with the move he made? Well, the move he made blocks the queen from here. But guess what? We already have one, two pieces hitting that. I can get a third piece hitting that. And white did not see it. Or white chose not to do it. I don't know which one. Uh, maybe he's worried about this. But guess what? This move, what a pretty move. What a nice not a developing move, but you're fully developed. It's time to attack, folks, when you're fully developed. And look at that. One, two, three pieces and only two protecting. And let's keep going because the bishop is pinned. That bishop can't go anywhere. How do you get another defender on that pawn? That's not so easy. Uh, you can move this knight here, but then we just take it. That's free candy. Okay, two versus so the knight has to go here. I mean, come on, we should like that. Let's take a look at what might happen. So the knight goes here to protect the pawn. So now we have three protecting the pawn. We have three attacking the pawn. Can white get another attacker on the pawn? Well, yes, white can get another attacker on the pawn. And it's right here. This knight can come here and attack the pawn. Remember, we also said this pawn is not protected at all because of the pin. So now we have four pieces attacking the pawn, and black has three. So again, we're about to take off that pawn. What can black do to stop from losing that pawn? And remember, he's also at risk of losing this pawn. And this is the one that most beginners won't see. They won't remember that this is pinned and this pawn is just hanging. So now, how do you defend this pawn? You can't put that in front. You can put the bishop in front and lose your queen. We already said that. We're not going to take the knight to take away one of the attackers because we lose our queen. We're in trouble. We're in deep trouble. And this all was all for the hat taking um, with an immediate third piece attacking a pin piece. So... This is where, if I were going over the other things, we said, why did he do that? Well, we know why he did the bishop move, but we think it was a mistake because it blocks the queen. The thing that happened, it blocked the queen. Um, can we play chase the queen? No. Can we play chase the king? Not really, but boy, if we get down to six, find targets. We already have been hitting this target twice the whole game. This queen move first kept an extra defender on that pawn. This move took away a defender and allowed us to look for tactics. So we found the target here. The target would be here. Moving here would attack the target. And we would find a tactic of the pin of the bishop to the queen. We also have this pawn can't move because this pawn is pinned to the king. So our next move, our next move likely will be to move here, which would attack both. The pin p another pinned piece attack the pawn would also be attacking this pawn because it can't move, and the knight would also attack the bishop. So if this knight were to move, this bishop would fall with an attack on the queen. My gosh, what a beautiful position that would be! So again, works of art, right? Chess can be art. So what's good and bad about this move? Well, it attacks the bishop, but it blocks the rook. The rook can't get in here anymore. The rook wanted to get in there, and now the rook can't get in there. It's just blocked him out. But, but the good news is one, two, three, and remember this one? We have the double attack still, and the queen still can't take. So black, black is still in trouble, but he does have this, and this is why the rook should go first. If the rook goes first, the only, lot, the only way to protect is this, and then we move our knight here, because then the knight's not there to trade off any longer, and the knight is over here doing uh, protection duty. So right now, black's only ch chance, right, he has to take the knight. He has to take the knight. But he, this is just a mistake, right? So, I mean, we look at life, and this is a mistake. It's, it's a mistake because um, it doesn't do anything to protect this. Oh, it does. I'm lying. There's the third piece, but they're both heavyweight pieces. So white can take, would take back, and guess what? That piece is still pinned. 
So we don't like pins, right? Pins are not good. So you think about it. If he takes, he takes. What is he going to do? Now he's got a discovered attack. Remember, I love discovered attacks. We got a discovered check on the king coming. And we just got the rook for a knight. Because you're not going to take that. Even though you could take with the queen. You know, after all the trades, right? Everything's gone. But you lost the queen in that mix. So not good. Not good. So this is not... This is not the best answer. The best answer was a simple take the knight. Pawn takes back. Knight can go away. Um, find a home. Hey, we can go here possibly. But then we'll push it. And we can drop back to here. Maybe it's fine. Uh, it could come here. You can even go here if you really felt like it. But yeah. So the, the knight just has to go away and find a home. Find someplace safe to hide. And, and he's okay. Uh, he's, he's still in the game. He's still playing. Okay, but black just makes a bad move. Now he develops a bishop where it should have been in the first place. By the way, I find this with beginners all the time. They develop a piece, and then the very next move, they move it to where it should have been, uh, where it should have been developed. Because they're not sure where it should go. They just move it someplace, and then it becomes pretty obvious that it's in the wrong. So white continues with with tactics. This is... Are there tactics, right? Is there free candy? So Black says, I know I can't take because you'll take with check or you'll take here. I'm going to lose a piece. I'm going to lose the rook for a knight. I'm going to lose the exchange. I get a pawn for it, but all I'm getting is back one knight. So Black instead moves. Get out of the discovered attack. Remember I told you, discovered attacks are just so powerful. All right. So why do you do that? To get out of the discovered attack. You could have moved, can't move here. Sorry, can't move there. Can't move there because of the knight. So this is actually the only square you could go to to get out of the attack. Now, black, white comes here. And black has to say to himself, why did he go there? It's under attack by my bishop. I would win the exchange, right? I mean, that looks like I win the exchange. If I take here, I get a rook for my bishop. Why did white do that? Was it to attack here? King's protecting it. Why did he do that? So what would be a good move for Black? To figure out first, why did your opponent do this? And then based on why he did this, we're going to talk about in two seconds, our best move might be to snatch this guy. Yeah, granted, now he can move the rook and have a discovered attack on the knight. He can even take here first. And then we don't want to take here because of the check problems, um, but could, in theory, take here. Right? We could take here because where does this rook go? Wherever he goes, he's going to get a discovered attack on our queen. Uh, but here, we just take it off. Um, here, we just take it off. Okay, Not take it off. We move our queen. But also remember that after, um, well, even now, even now, um, yeah, the best bet would be if he takes here take with our queen. Okay. Or actually, now if he takes here, we could just take here. And uh, two knights, two knights. Yeah, we're equal again. So black has actually survived uh, the onslaught. So black has to say, why did he move his rook here? But instead of figuring out why white put his rook here, and granted he's down to a minute and 40 seconds, um, and this was a seven minute game, seven plus three. So he just said, oh, we can't, you know, free exchange. I'll take it. White does not take back with the bishop, of course. White set a trap. Set a trap. It said, please take my knight. Uh, I love Eric Rosen. Eric Rosen, you're awesome. And Eric Rosen would have said on this move, although this one is so obvious, he would have said, oh, no, my rook. Uh, I love it. So, uh, yeah, you can't. If you take, this is what happens. And we get a fork where we lose our queen. And worse, if you take here with the king to get out of check, this is now a discovered check. Remember, we love discovered attacks. But now the discovered check means we lose our other rook also. And that is what happened. All right, game over. GG, as they also say online a lot. I'm too old. Uh, I, can't, I gotta get used to these acronyms and fun ways of talking, GG. So we actually only went over one game and it took the whole hour. Uh, but the idea is that you have to think about all these things. So how do you think about your moves? 
Try this out in a correspondence or slow game. We're going to be going over these. We're going to go over why did he do that for the whole week. And then we will definitely hit on king chases and queen chases. We will definitely look at, and this one will take a lot of time because when we say find targets, multiple targets, but that should be one week lesson. Find tactics. We might do a different week for every tactic, a pin, a skewer, a double attack, a discovered attack, right? We're going to have to look at all of those. But then we're going to look for those tactics in our games besides just learning the tactics. And then, of course, we already know the other ones like, is, are we developed? Is there free candy out there? But then the last, that other one is, are my pieces sad? So is there a piece that I have that is not happy? So if we go back a ways, we'll see that this knight, eh, it's, I don't know if he's happy or not. He's not really, he's there. He didn't get to do anything all game. Our bishop wasn't very happy. This bishop is definitely not happy. Okay, but it has potential to be happy. So weakness, but black tried to take advantage of the weakness. And think about this queen, okay? We didn't think about this queen is unhappy. This queen really has no place to go. Um, you know, it could come here. Eh, got no place to go. Queen is unhappy. This is an unhappy piece. But luckily for white, the rest of his pieces. These two pieces, especially because they found a target, are very happy. This knight has potential. It's pretty happy. This rook is pretty happy. Rooks love open files, better than semi-open. A semi-open file would be if there was a black pawn on this file. Rooks of each color love open files. So this rook is extremely happy. This bishop, not so much yet. And then it was like, you didn't make me any happier. And in fact, you limited my queen's little bit of happiness. You took away more of my queen's happiness, right? And this was, as we saw, a better move would be right here to really bother. Well, I'm not even sure what black does here. Oh, maybe, maybe no, black can't even go here or here. He just, remember the pin, he's gonna drop the queen. And if he tries to take the time to attack the rook, Rook can just be our first piece that we take with, and we get that pawn. And after that pawn, we know bad things are going to happen, right? Because we could do the check right away. We don't have to do the check right away. We can attack the knight with the other rook. Uh, but again, we could just check with check. We even better, even better, because we love discovered attacks, we can attack the queen with our knight. Yeah, another attack of the queen with the knight. And now where does that queen go? Can't go here, can't go here, can't go here. Go here. Go here. Here. And he's got to be careful. Because if he goes to a white square, we get to say check and attack the queen because of the discovered attack. So he can't go to a white square and survive. It may, not even there. That's just free candy. Okay, so the queen has to go to one of the black squares. Can't go to this one. Can't go to this one and attack twice. So now the queen has to go to a black square. Which one would you like? The queen could come to this black square and we could attack it again. This would be called chasing the queen. We are playing chase the queen. Now the bishop doesn't have time to even get in between because we just take it off. The queen has to move again. Here or here. Still can't. Well, there are no white squares for it to go to anyway. So where does the queen go now? Right, you yeah, you pick. I I kind of sad for the queen, so I'm not I'm not overly thinking we have great places for the queen to go. So we're gonna have a discover check, and we get to make a free move with the knight. So we could do a double check, which just forces the queen king to move. But the king's gotta move anyway. The bishop can't interpose still, the queen won't interpose. So the king's gonna move anyway. So if we double check from here, the king um could move here, here, or here, but we could also move here with check, taking away this square, leaving only the back squares for the king. And eh, still not so much fun. I'm still looking for more, right? Always, always looking for more. We have a free move with our knight. Um, maybe just simplest is here. So maybe the queen should have been here to protect the bishop. Eh, the bishop, we don't have to worry, right? So the king moves. 
and then we can see if there's more damage that we can do. That's that's the way the game usually goes when you're ahead. Um, you you know, or if the king even did go to queen, oh, the queen can't go there. Sorry, queen can't go there. Knight just take you off. So this is really kind of forced. Uh, only place for him to go. Knight can come here. Nice, because he from here. He would attack this square and this square and protect the knight. He could go here and say, yeah, I'm protecting the knight, and I know you could trade. Go ahead. Now you might say, go for the trade. Because if you don't trade, I'm going to take this pawn and attack your queen. Or Betty, yet, I'll take the... I don't want to take the bishop because I'm holding it. Um, but then I should win it. So the idea is if he takes, you take, and now the knight has to move. And now the queen just got that... On that he remember how sad the queen was? The queen was sad. The queen had no moves. No moves. Now the queen has a diagonal to play on. Now the queen is getting to be happy. So the knight could move here, threatening the pawn. Not a good threat because back. So now what do we do? Um, we can come here and attack the pawn. Life is good so far. Bishop could try to come here and protect. But remember what happens with white squares. We said that was a bad place for any pieces because that knight gets to move and attack a white square. So that is going to be a problem. Um, we could do that. Don't know if I want to push the pawn. Don't know what I want to do right now. I might just say that. The knight could go here and attack my powerful, powerful bishop. So, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. I'd have to find the best move for, for white. It, it feels like there should be really good moves. Um, really good moves somewhere. So, may, maybe it is just, I don't know. I mean, you could say check here. Oh, king has to go. So are these three squares. Could take here with check again, but then the queen takes and we kind of lose our momentum. Maybe not. We do have a check here. Hmm. We do have a check here. Hmm. Possibilities, possibilities. Uh, just wish the rook get into the game. That's that's where you start wondering. Uh, maybe I have better. Can I get the rook into the game first? Oh no, I really don't have any good squares to put the rook on yet. But I want to get the queen in the game too. So, uh, dilemma, right? Big dilemma that you have a free move. You already won the rook. Uh, not a rook. What are we, where are we at right now? Let's see. We have uh, three minor pieces, three minor pieces, rook and rook. Okay, so we're equal. So we just have a free move, an attacking move that we want to try to make the most of. Okay. So this might be the better move. I, I'd have to look it over. This move is definitely playable. Um, attacks enough things. Takes. Maybe we take back with the rook. We don't take back with Eh, possibility. Kind of, my gut says I like the pawn take, face the knight. It only has a square. This is the only square that it looks like he can harass. So maybe I'll come here first. Not even go here first. I don't know. Uh, because then I can possibly uh, I push on the pawn and the knight goes here. My queen is on the other side of the knight, and then we might have more. Yeah, not, not sure. Not sure. That move could be uh, here. So there's no reason to move the knight yet because the bishop can't come here to help. We just take it off. Uh, the knight can't take the pawn. Can't take the pawn. So everything is kind of stuck where it is. So there's no reason to rush when you have the advantage. And we definitely have the advantage. In moves like this, get to just point at the bishop, and we're going to be able to bring the knight out and get a second attacker with tempo. Um, so that's that's even good. All right. Ah, enough. All right. You get start uh, looking at the game too long. I uh, think uh, LLMP. Uh, yes, I did get to talk about the middle game in the sense of how do you think, right? So that. We're not getting into a lot of the planning behind the middle game. All we're doing is looking at how you think, how you should think about what you should be thinking from move to move. And this is 
a way for you to think through your moves. And the first thing that we're working on this week is figuring out why they did that. And we're going to throw in the others as bonuses when we see them. But mostly we're focusing on is why did he do that? And that's for this week. Hope you guys got something out of it. Hope you learned. Hope uh, I did. It was fun. And we will see you Wednesday at 11. Might change that time in the near future if it looks like we don't have people that can make it at 11 on, on a Wednesday. I just thought it'd be nice to do some one in the daytime, two at night. But I can move them all tonight, especially if most of the people that are attending are nighters. So we can definitely do it at 8 o'clock on Wednesdays instead. We'll see how it goes. I'll probably keep it at 11 for a couple more. This will be going up on YouTube, so uh, you can share it with other people if you like. Thank you again for your time. And we will see you uh, on the flip side. Have a good night.